walking animations. Sooner or later, if you're going to animate, you're going to need to make something like this. And that might sound terribly intimidating because look at what's happening here. The arms are moving, the legs are moving, the head is moving, the body is moving. There's so much going on here and that can be very, very overwhelming. But in reality, if we take a look at what's actually happening here, you will start to understand a lot of basic principles of animation. So let's dive into this and maybe we'll learn something. As you can see, I already have a character parented to this control rig over here. If you don't know how to do that, go check out my last video on making a very easy and quick animation rig. Your control rig might look very, very messy. And that is because it's got a lot of controllers on it that you're not actually going to use. So what we're going to do first is we're going to select the control rig and we're going to go into pose mode. Once we enter pose mode here in the item tab at the very bottom, there's a lot of different things that we can enable and disable. Uh, I think by default, the root is also enabled. Uh, we will disable that, however, because we're not going to do any root based animation. And we're also going to disable uh, the tweaking controllers. Those are the blue uh, little orb that you see that will already make this thing a lot less busy. And we're also going to be disabling the forward kinematics because we will be doing this entirely through inverse kinematics, which is automatically set up in this rig. So disabling these, you can see the green lines disappearing here. That's very, very good. And now everything that we have left is a lot more manageable. But in your case, you might not actually have these little orbs yet because these are the pull targets. And if we uh, disable those real quick, getting those pull targets to show up, if it looks like this, is as easy as going over here and clicking on toggle pull. That will enable this little orb over here, which will be the direction the elbow of your character faces. So we'll get into why that is important in a moment. Now, what do we do? As you can see down here, if I select everything, uh, you might be surprised to find out that there's just a very long list of keyframes. You might think, but you have got the arms moving at different moments than the feet moving, then stop thinking about animation like movement. That is a very, very common misconception. And it, it makes sense, right? Because you're seeing something in movement. But in order to actually make something, it's generally better to think of it as a series of poses with in between frames, which you can then maybe tweak if necessary. But mostly we're talking about a number of different poses and a walk cycle has a couple of very well-defined poses. There's plenty of different references online. Uh, I'll just throw one up on the screen right now uh, for you to see what the usual poses are. This is the series of poses you will be doing for one step. And then obviously you need to mirror that on the other step as well. So as you can see here, we start with the contact pose. Then I generally, when I animate, I design these poses every 10 frames just so that I can have a very clear side of how many poses I've done already. And then once I've done all the poses of my animation, I start to go into the timing. And once you get into the timing, you might need to tweak a pose a little bit to just to give that a little bit more impact for like steps, for instance. Uh, but generally, I go by first do the poses, then do the timings. So we start in this contact pose for the left foot over here. Then we go slowly into this pose over here, which is the low pose. That is the pose where you have just planted your feet onto the ground and are about to move forward, taking the step. Making a walk cycle though, you're actually animating this all in place. You don't want the character to move forward at all. So what happens instead inside the passing pose is that the foot slides backwards while the other foot is uh, starting to well pass in front of it. That's where the pose gets its name, the passing pose. Next up, we go into the high pose, which is the opposite foot uh, getting ready to step down and start the entire cycle over again. Because after this high pose, we go right away back to the contact pose, but mirrored for the right foot. And then the other keyframes are literally just the same cycle, but for the other side. And if we play this in a loop, we have a very sluggish looking walk animation, but it's still a walk animation. It's really as easy as that. And this generally is the way you should be looking at most animations, at least character animations, is what poses do I need to move through 
in order to make the movement that I want. All right, we have a T pose here, and that is what you're going to be working with most of the time if you're modeling like a character, right? So one thing you'll see me do a lot as we go through this is look off into this direction, and that's because I've got a second monitor here with the exact image that I put up on screen earlier. Animating, modeling, doing anything, it's very important to have references. And even if it's just you drawing on a piece of paper, some stick figures of the poses that you're going to need to go through, just having that as a reference, being able to look back and forth between, okay, this is what I've drawn and this is what I'm going to animate, is a huge help. So do yourself a favor and do that. We're going to go through the contacts and the low pose here. I'm not going to do the entire walk cycle because that's going to take forever to do and we don't have all day here, now do we? So the first thing I do is I grab my foot and I press the Y key to move it backwards. Uh, I move it back a fair little bit, then grabbing the heel, I uh, move that up. And you will notice that if I try to move this up and pressing the Z, that it rotates instead. So that is a bit of an annoying thing, is this is a rotating uh, controller rather than something that you can grab. So if you want to rotate this, you uh, you grab it and then you press X because you rotate it over the X axis. And then you rotate this up to get that, um, that only tiptoe touching the ground feel. And here we do the exact opposite. We uh, grab this, we press Y and we move it forward a little. And then we grab this controller, G and X, and we move it up. And just like that, we've got the feet ready. Next up are the arms, and this is where things start being a little more interesting because these pull targets, they work, right, for, for the feet. I could ideally, like, put this down a little bit, but you see, it doesn't really make much of a difference. For these, it will. So, uh, what you might also notice before we move on is that I rotate and orbit around a lot while I'm animating, and that's because we're animating in 3D, and just by the nature of doing this on a screen and not on a physical object like you would do in stop motion, you cannot see everything that you want to see. You're going to need to refresh your perspective sometimes. So if you think something look good, looks good, just orbit around, see if it still looks good. It probably does not. Uh, so you'll see me do that a lot with the arms specifically. Uh, we grab the arms and we want the arm that is, or, or the foot that is in the back needs to have the arm in front and the other way around. So we grab the arm here and I move it into the body. Then I move it down a little and I rotate the hand uh, around the Z axis a little and then rotate it around, let's see its own y-axis so if you press um the r for rotation and then y it rotates it in the world y direction but if you then press y again it suddenly does it in its local axis which takes into account the other rotations and positions that you've given it so now it's just rotating around its own wrist and that is usually in animation much more useful to have so we probably want you to have this a little closer to your body maybe rotate this up a little bit and now you can see the elbow is maybe doing a little bit of weird stuff so if we get this pull controller over here this one and we move that down and maybe back a little you can see the arm starting to move a little bit and that's because this pull target is where the elbow is pointing towards and especially going into moving the arms in very big movements, you're going to need to take care of that as well. For right now, uh, it's just a little tweaking, um, but for this, you will see that it'll uh, glitch out because we're moving the arm backwards here. So grabbing this again, moving it uh, closer to the body, moving it even closer to the body, rotating this around in the Z first, then around its own Y, we're just duplicating what we did on the other side first to get it into a somewhat decent position and then we uh, pull this to the back uh, and we definitely need to rotate this in the x direction as well you can see this elbow is doing some weird stuff because it's pointing to over here 
uh, but that, that just doesn't look very natural. And it's also very close to its pull target, meaning that when it starts to move around, it's going to be twisting quite a lot. So we want to move the pull target back a lot more and a little bit more in towards the body, making this pose a lot more natural. And just like that, we've made the first pose. It, it can be as easy as that, right? So what I generally then do is I press A to select all the bone objects here, all the controllers, pressing I and applying whole character. There we go. This keyframes everything. So if you did something and you forgot that you did something with a certain property, this will make sure to keyframe that. Then I move 10 frames forward and we're going to go into the low pose now. So the foot that was up, which is this one, is going to go back down. So we get the heel controller again and we press G and X and we rotate this back down so it touches the ground. And it doesn't really need to move too much. I generally do like to move it back a little bit just to get a tiny bit of motion into it, but not too much. And this foot over here uh, needs to rotate up even more. So right now I'm already uh, able to tell that I'm going to uh, do a whole character keyframe because my last keyframe here, I had way, way too much uh, rotation to this one already. So we're going to tweak this a little lower down, which also means that I probably need to take this a little closer. And we're going to apply that. And now, as you can see, that has a lot more movement to it and feels a lot better. And just like that, we've already done the feed for this next pose. So the arms generally don't really need to move too much in this pose either. Uh, you can give them, again, a little bit of extra motion. I would suggest mostly like doing something with the hands here because you don't want to mess up the pose for the arms themselves too much. But you, you still don't want them to be entirely uh, static. So just do something a little bit and mostly with the hands. Having the hands be delayed a little bit behind the arm movements gives it a little bit of a, a looser feeling and that's generally something that i do like but it's called a low pose for a reason right so uh we select this torso controller over here i generally also like to select the arms uh, or, or the hands at the same time pressing g and z then moving the entire thing down because this pose is where the character goes down before going up again and just like that, if I select everything and do whole character, uh, we can now animate, if I select the playhead instead of the keyframes, we can animate between these two poses. Well, if you keep doing this for the passing pose and the high pose and whatever, whatever, you get a walk cycle at the very end. So I hope this helped. If it did, uh, do please leave a like below the video. Uh, let me know what other kind of things that you might need help with uh, because this video was made possible by this, uh, I don't know if this is on screen, uh, but by a very kind commenter that gave me the uh, inspiration to do this, and we're going to keep doing that. So if you want your own uh, question answered in a tutorial, please do leave them below in the comments. I'll see you all back next time with a new tutorial. Until then, good luck with animating.